There has been a woeful lack of reporting on what is happening in Iran right now. I do think that because of social media, because people have made a genuine effort to spread the word, that it's not as entirely unknown as perhaps the government might want it to be. But I still think there's much more that we can do. Mainly, we need to keep talking about it. And we need to do so in a way that lifts the voices of those who are in Iran instead of putting our own opinions on a pedestal. If you haven't yet seen my last video on how barbaric and inhumane Iranian women have been treated over compulsory hijab for the last 40 years, I urge you to go to my page and check that video out. But compulsory hijab and Massa's murder is only one of the reasons why Iranians are protesting. Now I'm going to share some of the anti-female laws written in the Islamic dictatorship's constitution in Iran. First and foremost, according to the Islamic constitution of Iran, a female's worth is half of a man. Therefore, the following laws are written accordingly. A female cannot legally become president or a judge. Every female citizen of Iran must obtain the permission of her father in order to marry. The husband by law is the head and the decision maker of the household. A married woman must reside in a residence decided by her husband. Every married Iranian woman needs her husband's written consent in order to obtain a passport and cannot leave the country without her husband's consent. A husband can legally revoke his wife's work permit if he does not wish her to be employed. The wife is by law required to obey her husband and to comply with her duty of sex, which she is not allowed to withhold. A wife will inherit one eighth of the husband's assets after his passing, while a husband gets a quarter of the wife's assets after her passing. The right to divorce belongs to the man. If a woman wants to file for divorce, she has to go through many hurdles and prove why she deserves a divorce, which whether or not she gets a divorce will be decided by a judge who's a man. In the matter of custody of the children after divorce, daughters aged seven and up and sons ages two and up automatically belong to the father. In the cases of the father's death, daughters aged seven and up and sons ages two and up belong to the family of the father, grandfather or uncles on the father's side. A man is allowed four wives at the same time while a woman is allowed one husband. And infidelity of a woman can be punishable by death by stoning. And if a man catches his wife while having intercourse with another man, he is allowed to put her to death. A man is also allowed temporary wives, which is prostitution, where you can legally wed a woman for a decided period of time, which is mostly used for bedding them. And the temporary marriage is revoked on the contractual expiration date. The legal age for girls to be married off in the Islamic constitution of Iran is 13. But girls younger than 13 may be wed with the permission of the father. Married young girls, children, are exempt from getting an education. A daughter will receive half of the inheritance of that of a son. Women by law are required to abide by the Islamic dress code. The punishment is imprisonment, paying a heavy fine, or being lashed as many times as decided by the court. The age for receiving punishment in the full extent of the law is 9 years old for females and 15 years old for males. A female's testimony is also worth half of a man. In the court of law in Iran, if you have a witness that is a female, it will not be enough. Therefore, you need two females to counter a male's testimony. In cases where a father or the father's male relatives murder their daughter or wives, they may be forgiven under the law. In terms of war guilt, war guilt, the amount of compensation paid by a person committing an offense to the injured party or in cases of death to his family. A woman's worth is half of a man. If a woman is murdered by a man and the woman's family want the murderer to pay with his life, the victim's family must first pay the murderer's family the other half of the war guilt because he is a man and she was a woman. And that is only a few of the horrific and discriminatory laws against women in the Islamic dictatorship of Iran's constitution. So the fight isn't only about compulsory hijab, even though compulsory hijab is more than enough of a reason. The fight is for dignity of women. The fight is for women's rights. For example, a lot of Americans and Westerners who are talking about Iran are afraid of being pigeonholed as Islamophobic for criticizing the hijab or the Islamic regime in Iran. And as a result, you have this sort of divide where you have a lot of right-wingers just taking this as an example as a way to be Islamophobic and to get away with it, and then you have those who are just going on with this choice, feminism, suedo sort of thing where they're saying, it's a choice, it's a choice. That's not what this conversation is about. It's not about this being a choice, because for so many women, it's not a choice. <laughs> لباس ازا با سبت چشم دوزه یا لا 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 یا لایی کن گل غشنگم یا لایی کن 
even in places where there is no governmental compulsory wearing of the hijab, there is still a shit ton of cultural and familial and societal pressure to conform. And particularly in the context of Iran, where women and protesters are dying on the streets, they are dying, they are being murdered, their bodies are being hidden from their families, they're not even allowed to be mourned. You're trying to center the idea of it's a choice over the fact that it's not a choice, not for them, not right now, and they're willing to die in order to get that choice. Western Muslims in particular have been responding to the situation by policing how Iranian women protest, by saying not to burn the hijab because it's Islamophobic, arguing that the hijab is a choice while also admitting it's an obligation for women, changing the topic from Iranian women's struggles to the struggles of Western Muslims. None of this has shown any solidarity towards the majority of Muslim women who live in the Eastern world. Various Iranian women have been harassed online for burning their hijab or taking off the hijab. And the saddest part is that the non-Muslim West has been split into those two sides. And in the end, it's just contempt and disregarding the West has for Middle Easterners. It's just exhausting. Because the right is full of morons and white saviorish bastards who love this situation to put through their own agenda. But the Western left is so guilty. They just feel so much guilt for the concept of Western colonialism in the Middle East that they just rather ignore and turn a blind eye to the dangers of the dictatorship for the people of Iran. I've even seen some leftists support the dictatorship in Iran just because it's against the U.S. And in the Western discussion, the interests and needs of the Iranian people are the lowest priority despite this being the center of the discussion, period. this is not about Islam, this is about freedom and choice, well, what do people want freedom from then? What is stopping this choice? They say, took a nation hostage. Who did? Holding them captive. Again, who? What entity? The fact is, it's the Islamic regime, and you have to recognize that people are protesting against this specific named problem. This is about Islam. This is about the religious orthodoxy that has misogynistic treatment of women embroiled inside of it. It's, it's really that simple. And of course, I don't want to talk about this the entire video. I think it's important to just look at the commentary that others have made, particularly through TikTok and other videos. I think, for one, it's really nice to see some solidarity between men and women during this protest, and that men are putting their lives in the line for this too. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's kind of rare. I mean, when you go to, you see Western marches and Western protests, it's all women. It's all women. It's not like it's, it's a women's problem, so women protest it. For example, Linda Lovelace's um, Deep Throat was shown in theaters, and the whole crowd that was protesting it was women. And yet, in this case, there is some intense solidarity because everyone is tired of living under this regime. And I think that that solidarity is really, really beautiful. And for one, I think we need to continue talking about this and paying attention to what those in Iran are saying. If we turn a blind eye, we allow the Islamic regime to murder, to kill, to commit more heinous crimes. Only by staring resolutely, only by taking witness, can we actually do something. It's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright.
For everybody wondering how can I help Iran, listen to this video. By the end of this video, you are going to know how you can stop three young Iranians on death row from being executed. This is Elham Chubdar. She is currently on death row. She's been sentenced to death for being gay. <laughs> This is Zahra Sadiqi Hamedani. She is currently on death row for being gay. Finally, Sherveen Hajipur. He has been arrested for singing a song called Baraye Azadi, which means for freedom. Elham and Zahra were sentenced to be executed by hanging on September 4th. They blindfold you, they tie a noose around your neck, and they hang you in a method of strangulation that lasts between 10 to 20 minutes. The United Nations urged Iran to stay the execution. We have heard nothing since then. The media has been silent. Elham is currently listed as still being in prison. These are the steps that we need you to take to get them off of death row and I'm going to explain after this how it's actually going to help. Number one, engage with this post, share, like, comment. If you don't want to do any of those things, save the video, that alone boosts engagement. Copy the link. Two, tag every single international news media outlet that you can find. Three, tag every single LGBTQ member or ally that you can find. Four, tag every single women's rights organization. And five, tag every big platform that you can find. Six, tag every single Congress person that you can find. Seven, sign the petition. Eight, when you repost these things, use the hashtag, let Elham go, let Zahra go, let Sherevin go. Now let me tell you how this is gonna help. In 2020, three young Iranian men were protesting the gas prices, the spiked gas prices. Because protesting is a crime, all three Three of them were sentenced to death by hanging. Because their sentences got international attention, Iran eventually reduced their sentences to five years. They are still in prison. They're set to be released in three years from now. These petitions make numbers. Numbers make news outlets interested. Those interested outlets share the stories. Those stories get the attention of international human rights activists. They put pressure on Iran. It works. It has worked and it will work if we do our part. Right now, what we do not need is armchair quarterbacks criticizing everything that we're trying to do before turning off TikTok, 
farting and watching ESPN. If you got arrested for sharing an LGBTQ hashtag on your TikTok and they dragged you to court and they told you that you were sentenced to death by hanging and you were waiting in your cell, vomiting and fainting, wondering when they're going to blindfold you, tie a noose around your neck and then hang you, what would you want the world to do? Hashtag let Elham go everywhere. Hashtag let Zahra go. Hashtag let Sherevim go. What is the worst that's going to happen? That we get our hopes up? That we're crushed when we find out that it didn't work? So what? We will live. But if you don't do your part, they won't. This, dear viewers, is where we part. I'd just like to note this was not a scripted video. And I don't want to overstep and speak over the voices of the Iranian people. However, I don't want to stay silent either out of fear of saying the wrong thing, especially when, from a feminist perspective, it's very obvious, at least to me, what the right thing is. This is a revolution. We're watching the world change right now, today. And I think it's very important that we continue to offer support to Iran, continue to give them what we can, which right now they're asking for us to pay attention and to stand by them as they go for freedom.